Hello everyone, this is Chaman Singh. Welcome to the course on algorithms. This course is created by Crowd Course Initiative. In this video, we will cover the minimum spanning tree. What is a minimum spanning tree? Let us consider a connected and undirected graph G with V vertices and E edges. A minimum spanning tree is a subgraph of G such that it span all the nodes is acyclic connected and its total weight is minimized. The weight assigned to each edge of the graph can be either the cost of traveling from one node to another or it can be the length of the edge. When talking about MST, we come across two major properties. They are partition or cut property divide G into two partitions S and S prime. Let E be the minimum weight is connecting the two partitions. Then E is the part of the MST. The cycle property. Let T be a MST of graph G, E be an edge of G which is not in T. That is, it is not a part of the MST. Let C be the cycle formed when edge E is added to T. Let us consider another edge F which is part of the cycle C. Since C is T union E and T includes F initially, we can say that the weight of F is less than the weight of E since it was the part of MST initially. So it needs to have weight lesser than or equal to an external edge. Here we have an example graph G. Primarily there are two main algorithms for finding out the minimum spanning tree namely Prims and Kruskal's algorithms. Let us see how the Kruskal algorithm works. We first sort the edges in increasing order of weight, then we pick the least weight edge such that it does not form a cycle and mark it spend. Then we keep selecting edges in order. We halt when all vertices have been visited. Here is the pseudocode for Kruskal's algorithm taken from CLRS. Let's visualize with an example. We start with the graph G and take into account their weights in sorted order. After sorting the edges of graph, we choose edge BC which has the minimum weight and add it to our MST. We also mark vertices B and C as visited. Similarly, we choose the second edge having minimum weight such that it does not form a cycle. Here edge CF is chosen which has weight 1 and added to the MST. We mark vertex F as visited. After selecting edges BC and CF, we select edge EF which has weight 1 and add it to our minimum spanning tree, marking E as visited. Since all the edges with weight 1 has been exhausted and then we have edges ED and AF with weight 2. We will select one of them and add it to our MST. Let us say we select edge ED since it does not form a cycle and add it to our MST. After adding A's ED to the MST, we select the next minimum weighted A's AF and add it. For all other edges we are left with, we see that all the vertices have been visited so we get the minimum spanning tree. This is the final minimum spanning tree we get after applying Kruskal's algorithm and the weight of this MST is 7. Since now we know how Kruskal algorithm works, let us go through the Prince algorithm. We pick an arbitrary vertex S. We then grow MST forming a cloud of vertices. We store the minimum distance DV of adjacent vertices V outside of the cloud from vertices in the cloud. We then add vertex U in the cloud having minimum distance from vertices inside the cloud and add its parent PV and update the distance of adjacent vertices from U. Here is the pseudocode for Prim's algorithm taken from CLRS. We have an example graph. We start with vertex A. We update the distance of adjacent vertices of A. Here vertex B is at a distance of 5 from A and vertex F is at a distance of 2 from A. The table is updated for A where the PV that is parent of B and F is A. Looking at the table, we know that F is at the least distance from A in the first iteration so we add it to our MST and mark A and F as visited. Now we update the distances of adjacent nodes of F. The distance of both C and E from F is 1 so we update the table. And choose is FC at it has minimum distance from F. We could also choose is FE but since C is lexicographically smaller than E we chose is FC. Again we update distances of adjacent nodes from C. Here we see that the distance of P was 5 from A but now after discovering C, 
Since 1 is less than 5, we update B's distance to 1 and its parent to C. Also, after discovering age between C and E, we find that distance of E should remain 1 only since 1 is less than 10, so we don't update its distance and parent. Next, we update distance of vertex D from C having weight 3 and mark it as visited. From the table, the minimum weighted age we could select is CB which has weight 1, so we add it to our MST. Since all the adjacent nodes of B have been covered and there were no updations in the table, we move to the next minimum weighted age FE in the table which has weight 1 and add it to the MST. After discovering vertex E and adding it to our MST, we update the distances of its adjacent vertices that is the distance of T in the table. Previously it was at a distance 3 from C, now its distance from E is 2. We select the vertex with minimum distance which is D. We see all the vertices have been covered and this is what our MST looks like. The weight of the MST we got is 7. The two algorithms that help us find the minimum spanning tree have almost same running time although they might produce a different minimum spanning tree for the same graph with the same total weight. How do we decide between Prims and Kruskal's algorithms if we have an idea about the data we have? Here are some points to help you decide whether to go for Prims or Kruskal's algorithm. For a graph with V vertices and E edges, Kruskal's algorithm runs in big O of E log V time and Prims algorithm can run in big O of E plus V log V time. Prims algorithm is significantly faster when we have dense graph that is there are more edges than vertices in the graph. Kruskal's algorithm performs better in a sparse graph because it uses simpler data structures. We have some amazing applications of MST which can help save time and resources. MST is widely used in network design to find out the minimum cost required to lay wires across a region for telephone communication and in connecting computers in a building. Minimum spanning tree protocols are used to avoid cycles in a network and minimum spanning tree is also used in finding minimum cost travel route. Alright, this concludes our discussion on minimum spanning tree. Thanks for watching the video.